Welcome back. Uh, in the last lecture, I focused in primarily uh, on the 2012 election, and I want to let you in on kind of the, the dirty secret of France, if you will, and that is the National Front. Uh, I talked about how in 2002, there was this unforeseen election when Jean-Marie Le Pen uh, made the runoff and of course was defeated rather decisively uh, by Mr. Chirac. Uh, I then mentioned that in the 2012 election, uh, Le Pen uh, got an all-time record for the time for a uh, National Front candidate, and this was Mr. Le Pen's daughter, Marine. Uh, I know one French editorial said that Marine Le Pen is... Uh, fascism with a smile. Uh, and so uh, she was able to attract uh, a higher percentage uh, of the vote uh, in 2012 than her father, who founded the National Front, ha had received earlier. Although uh, in 2012, uh, uh, she did not make uh, the runoff election. And so uh, if you're wondering, gosh, it sounded like Le Pen's been around uh, for a long time. Uh, the answer is yes, the Le Pens have been around for a, a long time. And remember, I said that that in many cases, uh, French political parties are often extensions uh, of charismatic personalities. Again, whether it's de Gaulle, whether it's Mitterrand, whether it's uh, Giscard d'Estaing. Uh, and certainly, when you think about the National Front, until Marine Le Pen uh, stepped down after her defeat in the 2017 election. Uh, the Le Pens had been the face uh, of the National Front for well over three decades. So that finishes up uh, that 2012 discussion. And so the, the only election left, the only presidential election uh, left and legislative election for me to discuss uh, is the last election in 2017. Uh, keep in mind there is no information in your textbook uh, about this election uh, because uh, your textbook was written before the 2017 election. Uh, so the information in your notes uh, you won't find anywhere. Uh, I'll go through uh, what's written uh, in the notes and then I will make a few comments. Uh, you will notice uh, once again, uh, the fact that the election came uh, two weeks apart, the two rounds. The first round was April 23rd. The second round was May 7th. Uh, the election looked fairly typical in terms of the number of candidates. I said that, uh, you know, a normal French election is going to have usually somewhere in the 9 to 12 parties. Uh, so there were 11 candidates in the first round of elections, which looks very normal, very standard. Uh, voter turnout in the uh, first round uh, was a little bit lower than 2012. Remember, uh, in 2012, uh, the turnout uh, had been 80.4% in the first round. In this election, it was only 77.8%. Uh, uh, second round turnout, uh, was low by French standards. We would kill in America uh, for this kind of voter turnout. The uh, turnout in the French second round was only 75.3%, uh, which was the lowest turnout uh, in any French presidential election uh, since 1969. Uh, one of the things uh, that really leaps to the fore uh, is that the major parties for the first time were rebuked. Uh, I told you that uh, in a typical election, you have a mainstream party of the left versus a mainstream party of the right. Uh, there, of course, had been the exception in 2012 when the National Front candidate, uh, Mr. Le Pen, uh, shockingly made the runoff but then remember how, how badly he was trounced. Remember, uh, he only received 17.8% of the vote, uh, 
uh, the National Front candidate was seen as so repugnant uh, that every other major candidate backed him. Now, in the 2017 election, uh, the major parties uh, essentially uh, had had scandals or uh, internal civil wars that were going to prove problematic in this election. Uh, for the parties of the left, uh, Mr. Olong had represented kind of the center of the Socialist Party. Uh, the Socialists were really split into five uh, very different camps. Uh, the leader of the most conservative camp uh, was Mr. Macron, uh, who actually was a, a cabinet uh, minister, in fact, uh, while serving in Hollande's uh, government. Uh, he had initiated business and economic reforms known as Macron's Law. Uh, he believed that Mr. Hollande needed to move more to the center. Mr. Hollande refused. Mr. Macron quit his job and, and formed a new centrist political party the year before the election in 2016. Once again, uh, imagine this happening in the United States or Britain. It would be unthinkable. Uh, he formed a new political party in March. Uh, and the Socialist Party was so splintered that Hollande uh, understood that he was probably not going to get the nomination of his own party, which would be very embarrassing, very humiliating. Uh, and so rather than face this battle uh, for the nomination of his party, Mr. Hollande did something that no French president had ever done in the history of the country. Mr. Hollande uh, was the first incumbent president to not seek re-election in the history of the French Fifth Republic. Uh, this is almost unheard of. Uh, even in America, uh, this is almost unheard of. Uh, presidents are going to run for re-election. Uh, in America, for example, Herbert Hoover uh, ran for re-election uh, in the midst of the Great Depression. Now, he was defeated uh, overwhelmingly by Franklin Roosevelt, but presidents just don't do this. And so uh, the socialists then were kind of torn asunder uh, with potentially multiple uh, candidates in this particular case. Uh, on the other hand, there was a major uh, a, a major scandal in the party uh, parties of the right. We had a situation where uh, where the right had kind of a a, a scandal. Uh, uh, you had a situation where uh, there were there were some uh, some some money uh, issues, uh, especially with Mr. Fallon, uh, for example, uh, and so. Uh, the mainstream parties uh, were kind of internally divided and lacked cohesion, uh, and the voters were essentially turned off uh, by the political parties. The uh, party of the left, the Socialist Party, uh, received very little support. Uh, Mr. Olan was not seen as a particularly uh, effective president. Uh, and so uh, they were in trouble. Uh, the former socialists instead uh, overwhelmingly uh, backed Mr. Macron and this new uh, centrist party uh, that looked different than any political party had ever looked uh, in the history of France. Uh, remember I told you earlier that for different reasons, uh, both parties of the left uh, the socialists in particular, uh, in, in, and the communists, both had embraced statism, uh, but so had de Gaulle. Uh, de Gaulle uh, and uh, other par parties that associated themselves with either Gaullism or neo-Gaullism, uh, both extolled this notion that, that the government and the state uh, should extol statism uh, as a means of national independence, of, of national security, uh, of greatness, of putting the best and the brightest uh, in, in administering uh, major industries. Uh, and Mr. Macron ran uh, as a kind of pro-business, pro-free market candidate. Uh, and uh, he was able to get 
uh, support from uh, moderates, uh, moderates who had traditionally uh, backed the socialists, but uh, moderates that had in the past uh, backed Republicans. And so if you take a look uh, in the first round, Mr. Macron won with 23.7%. But once again, uh, we had one of those meltdowns. Marine Le Pen, uh, she attracted 21.7%. In other words, the National Front or the fascists almost got uh, the lead on the first ballot. Uh, keep in mind that she had received almost 18% of the vote in 2012. Uh, so she broke a record for her party in getting 21.7% of the vote. What was even more shocking is that the former communists, now using uh, the label the far left, uh, Mr. Melanchon had only received 11% of the vote in 2012 and noticed that his voter strength increased uh, up to 19.5% uh, and, and he ended up finishing third. Uh, so this was a shocking election. Uh, you don't get a socialist. You don't get a neo-Gaullist. Instead, you get a brand new political party, this party in March, uh, represented by Macron, and the National Front uh, pitted against one another with neither uh, major mainstream party being represented in this election. Like in 2002, uh, the vast majority of political parties backed Mr. Macron. You can see that in the second round, Mr. Macron won easily. Uh, he got a, essentially two-thirds of the vote. 66.1% of the vote, and Marine Le Pen, uh, she received 33.9% of the vote. So she did much better uh, in attracting support uh, from other parties than her father had, uh, although once again, the political spectrum overwhelmingly backed the mainstream candidate over the fringe candidate. Now, what was interesting was uh, a couple months later the legislative elections took place on June 11th and June 18th for the 577 seats of the National Assembly. The campaign began on May 22nd, so 19 days after the election was called, the first round of voting took place. Uh, notice that the short campaign season looks a lot like British elections. In fact, in some ways even shorter. Uh, in March, uh, Mr. Macron's party and their allies uh, won 350 of the 577 seats. So uh, keep in mind that 289 seats, uh, 289 was the bare minimum uh, necessary uh, really to form a governmental majority. Uh, they had far more seats than that with 350. Notice uh, in the handout, or in your notes, if you've uh, printed them, that the mainstream parties did horrible. Uh, the Republicans, the mainstream party uh, of the right, uh, only won 112 seats uh, in the National Assembly. Uh, and notice that the Socialists, who had been the governing party uh, in the 2012 election, the Socialists won the presidency, the Socialists uh, ended up uh, winning uh, a majority in the National Assembly, and they also, for a brief period of time, controlled the Senate. Uh, in the 2017 election, the Socialists only won 30 seats. Uh, the Communists and the Left Party combined uh, only won uh, 27 seats, uh, and the National Front uh, won only eight seats. Uh, and so even though the National Front leader, Marine Le Pen, uh, was the uh, second round candidate, uh, she was not able to uh, get many seats uh, for her party. Her party only received eight seats. So the 2017 election was a stunning, huge victory for this new political party in March. We get this boy president, 
Uh, Mr. Macron's only 39 years old uh, when he becomes president, and he has a huge legislative majority, which has allowed him to govern quite easily since 2017.